Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine, and this week we're hearing about a fall-like striper bite on the North Shore of Massachusetts and up into New Hampshire. We're hearing about excellent tog fishing off of Rhode Island. We're hearing that the football-sized blue fins are sort of regrouping off of Block Island and that bite is lighting back up. And finally, we're hearing about great bonito fishing both off of Martha's Vineyard and off of Rhode Island. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's Web Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. So let's start things off with the tuna bite like we've been doing lately. Um, one thing I need to mention is that the fishery for giant and large medium bluefins is closed right now. They closed it on August 4th and um, anything over 73 inches needs to be released. The good news is we're seeing good numbers of fish under that size class uh, being caught. Fish even up to 70 inches. Uh, some of them have been east of the Cape. Others have been from you know, a few miles south of Block all the way pretty much to New Jersey. It's, they're spread out, but we're seeing good numbers of fish of that size being caught. Now, as I alluded to in the headlines, there's been sort of a regrouping of these football tuna off of Block Island. They're, you know, go to the windmills, head two to five miles out. Uh, that seems to be where they are. There's no X marks to spot out there, no numbers where they're definitely going to be. But there are They've, they've regrouped and guys are getting a lot of these fish on jigs now. Fish from like 30 to 50 pounds. Uh, really great fighting fish on stand-up gear and um, in a very addictive battle from what I hear. Um, that bite has been great. I haven't heard that much about yellow fins this week. I know that guys are doing well at, at the canyons. I heard about a few uh, yellows and a few mahi taken south of Nantucket. Uh, but that was really the only way offshore news I heard this week. The other thing, kind of staying in the tuna vein, is just this bonito bite has just really exploded. So um, over the past few days and, you know, even out as much as a week, from mostly on the east side of the vineyard, like in between there and Nantucket, but other spots as well in Vineyard Sound and Nantucket Sound, the bonito bite has been really good. And then just this morning, this is Wednesday morning, uh, there was a blow up of fish off of Rhode Island. Um, there weren't a lot of details about exactly where they were, um, but just from piecing things together, it sounds like they may have been in the somewhere between Point Judith and Beaver Tail, somewhere in that range, maybe even over to Newport. Um, but the bite was good, and there was there was a lot of big fish, you know, big up to ten pound bonito in there, uh, and a lot of bait too peanut bunker, butterfish, silver sides, sand eels, just a, a lot of mixed bait and, uh, and great fishing overall. All right, let's move over into Massachusetts now. And as I said in the headlines, there's been a really good striper bite, like fall-like action up on the North Shore and into New Hampshire this week. I talked to James Jukes and he said that the things are getting really fall-like, you know, seeing more birds gathering in the sky and not just shore birds, but, you know, in, you know, songbirds and whatnot. It's very fall-like in that way, but also just a huge influx of bait fish in along the beaches. They're seeing silver sides and sand eels in great numbers, and that has translated to some fall-like fishing. Uh, he said uh, he went out three nights this week and experienced ferocious action. Uh, fish from, say, 8 pounds up to 25 pounds. Uh, soft plastics, bucktails, slender swimmers, needlefish, all these lures are catching fish. And um, <clears throat> the action's been fast and furious. As you head south from there, kind of getting into Boston and then down further, that heat wave we have really affect, had really affected the water temps. Uh, in some places, it's up to 70 degrees, and that has translated to a slowdown in striper action. So the, as we kind of head out onto the Cape, there's been a little bit of action on the flats outside of um, uh, Barnstable Harbor. And then, but the, the next place that I'm hearing about reliable catches is all the way around the end of the Cape and then down on the beaches from like Long Nook down to Nosset Inlet. Um, they've been moving around, so you know, you don't have to stay in those brackets. But the boat guys are getting them during the daytime, still on mostly on sand eels, so they're getting them on parachute jigs, they're getting them on Ronzi's and Cape Cod sand eels and things of that nature. Uh, here and there, I've heard about some top water action. There are some bunker schools around there. So uh, once in a while, guys are getting them on larger top water plugs. 
And then at night, you know, a portion of these fish come into the beach and they're rooting around for sand eels. So, you know, red fins and SP minnows, needlefish, uh, things like super snacks on a lead head or mega shads on a lead head. <clears throat> All these things are catching fish from the beaches down there. Um, the dominant class is definitely, say, 26 to 36 inch fish. But I have heard of fish into the 30 pound class and maybe a few that may just have touched 40 pounds. So there's there's a wide range of sizes and you have the opportunity to get a really nice fish there. And then the last place in mass that's productive for stripers. Um, I mean, there are places in between, of course, but the last place I'm hearing about reliable action are the salt ponds out of the vineyard. Mostly smaller fish, great for fly guys, great for light tackle guys. Um, you do have the opportunity to get a bigger fish, even even maybe a huge fish. There was that one caught a few weeks ago that might have been a 50 pounder, but uh, you know, 99.9% .9 of these fish are going to be in that 20 to 30 inch range. And uh, the only other thing that I would say is if you if you're going to partake in that fishery, just crush your barbs. Um, like I said, almost all of these fish are going to be schoolies that need to be released and. Crushing your barbs makes it easier, safer for the fish, and if you lose a couple schoolies, you know, no one's crying about it, so do that. Uh, the canal was good last week, and it ended Saturday. Um, the wind changed, and the fish just pushed out of there, and it's been really quiet since. However, we do have a weather change coming, and we do have breaking tides starting on Sunday morning and heading right through the first half of the week. If that weather change happens, you know, you keep your eye on the forecast. Um, but if we see a wind change, a very, very good chance that the canal will have a good couple of days. Um, you know, don't hang your hat on it and blame me when it doesn't happen. But um, I think the chances are better than average for a decent, you know, a decent run of fish in the canal next week. Sea bass wise, most of the sea bass I'm hearing about are still, you know, from like Westport to Falmouth and then out to like Nomans. Uh, so that area east of Nomans, west of the vineyard, still very good for sea bass. I did hear about some really good sea bass action in Quicks Hole. A lot of shorts there, but some really nice fish taken as well. And then, you know, if you don't mind taking the longer ride, head out to Cox's. You can nice sea bass out there you got a chance to get some really big fluke there's codfish there and then you know bring a stand-up rod because you might come across some uh, small or even medium bluefins out there um, so you know if you got the gas you got the time and you got the boat for it and you got the weather for it um, heading to Cox's might not be a bad idea uh, fluke news this week the only thing I really heard came from Nantucket Shoals uh, a friend of mine went out there with a family and they, they did well. They had lots of keeper sized fish up to nine pounds, no giants. Um, so it may, may be that, that, you know, giant doormat dreamboat fishery that we were seeing in late June and July has petered out and it's more just average and, you know, high average size fish, but there are a few fish getting close to double digit out there. So that fishery is still viable and still very good. And that's the story uh, this week in Massachusetts. And now moving over into Rhode Island, um, for striper guys, it's been a decent week. Um, surf casters in particular have reported pretty good catches, just not a lot of big fish or really no big fish, but there's a lot of small fish inshore and they seem to be congregating around some of these shallower reefs and rock piles. Uh, in my own experience this week, I've, it's been all a night game, and I've been getting them at any place that I can find a breaking wave. It's been really calm, so finding some of that white water has been a key. When it's flat calm and there's very little break at all, I'm doing best on needlefish, fished really slowly. When it's a little rougher and we've got you know some more consistent wave action, I've been doing better on fast-moving soft plastics on a lead head. But there are some bigger fish to be had uh, for the boat guys. And most of these fish are being taken on some of these humps that come up out of deep water, out of 30 feet or more of water. And so like I talked to Rob from Newport Sport Fishing Charters, he sent me some pictures of one of his uh, customers and she just crushed big fish that day. They got them on the tube and worm 
And he said they were just trolling around some of these shallower humps and finding these big fish. So, you know, that's Newport over to Jamestown and even kind of getting into Narragansett. Anywhere you can find like these these big humps off the bottom, big reefs that get close to the surface, uh, that seem to be holding some nicer fish right now. And they can be caught, like I said, on tube and worm, drifting live eels, or even at even when it's a little rougher, you might get one or two on the dock. Um, but if you don't want to do all that hunting and pecking, of course, your best option is to head up to Block Island and drift eels. We have the full moon coming up on Sunday. Full moons are historically very good out at Southwest Ledge and around the rest of the hot spots at Block Island. But keep your eye on the weather because we do have uh, we do have some possibility of some nasty weather coming over the weekend. So just keep your eye on that. Uh, if you are looking for bass heading out toward the breachways, been a lot of small fish there as well. Mostly congregated around the breachways themselves, but some of the shallow rocky points have also had fish. And um, Watch Hill, the Watch Hill Reefs have had some bigger fish at times as well. Uh, it's been similar to Block Island as far as how the guys are getting them. They're fishing at night, fishing with live eels, they're fishing with big soft plastics on lead heads. And they are finding some fish up into the 30 pound class, possibly some bigger ones in there as well. Sea bass fishermen, you're going to do your best work in three spots. It's either going to be the windmills, the east grounds, or the east passage and heading south from the east passage off of Newport. I'm hearing about a lot of nice sea bass in those areas. And uh, the east passage has a lot, lot more smaller fish. But if you go out to the windmills or you go out to the east grounds, you're also going to add in the possibility to catch some codfish. And um, you could also make the steam to coxes. And out there, you might find some tuna as well. Uh, but that's that. Those have been the three hot spots for uh, black sea bass in Rhode Island waters. But if you want to cross over the line into New York waters, I've also heard of some nice fish being taken uh, behind Fishers in the New York waters south of Fishers. And uh, like Mike D. Alfonso, recent uh, new author for the Fisherman magazine, he posted a picture of him and his mom with these nice fish. Uh, those were taken off of in some of the deeper water off of um, off of Fisher's Island. But I've even heard of some nice sea bass being taken by surf casters on bucktails. So that lets you know that there's just a lot of sea bass around right now. If you're catching small ones, I'd pick up and move because um, you know these the more popular spots do get picked over. So don't be afraid to strike out on your own and fish some of these smaller reefs. You might find you might strike gold. Fluke fishing. In Rhode Island has been on the slower side closer to shore a lot of shorts um, still off the breachways off the beaches heading out to block though it stayed pretty much the same uh, as far as this week over last week you heard about some nice fish up into that eight almost nine pound range plenty of keeper size fish uh, no no ten pounders nothing bigger than that but um but it's been decent you know guys out there are coming home satisfied for the most part and then the other thing that's just been really interesting this year is this summer tog fishery has been phenomenal. Um, again, I talked to Robbie from Newport Sport Fishing Charters, and I asked him because I've been hearing that a lot of guys are getting these fish in shallow water, like 10 feet deep. And he said he's getting them all over the place. He said he's gotten them in 15 feet, and he's got them in 55 feet, and all places in between. Uh, but he's seeing a lot of nice fish, a lot of big, heavy, you know, seven to eight pound fish. And um, he, said the, he said the only thing he wants to do right now is chase tuna or chase tog. And uh, now we're going to throw it over to Mike from Watch Hill Outfitters, and he's going to give us a little rundown of what's happening in the western end of the state. Hey guys, it's Mike Wade, Watch Hill Outfitters, checking in with you for the week. Definitely have a lot of bait going on. Seeing a lot of frigate mackerel around, a lot of big eye mackerel all over the reef and out front. The other thing that's going on is guys are really limiting out on some big black sea bass. Definitely get out there, do a little teaser rig, do some uh, jigging for them. You don't even have to use bait. There's just a bunch of them out there. The other thing that we have is some really big bass out on the reef and out front all the way across from Watch Hill to, to Block Island. Kurt has actually been out there using some rigs. Uh, we actually use a rockfish candy, really popular. It's a tandem rig, works great. Big bait, big fish. He's not full of either. <laughs> Can't say that. <laughs> that was good. Mike turned me on to this mojo last week and I thought I was watching a Myers movie, but it wasn't. This this rig 
has to have been the best rig I've ever used. And we had, uh, on one pole, we had a 48, 45 inch striper. And at the same time, on another rod, we pulled in a 43. So I gotta thank Mike and Watch Hill Outfitters for uh, the tip on how to catch the stripers. Come see us. It's Mike Wade, Watch Hill Outfitters, Tight Lines. And now as we move over into Connecticut, the bass fishing, it really hasn't changed much uh, since last week. So we still have uh, probably your best option for finding a bigger fish or just finding bass in general is going to be the race and fishing in tight to the island behind fishers. I'm hearing about fish anywhere from 30 inches to 35 pounds in there, and I wouldn't be surprised at all to hear about one much bigger than that. Uh, some of them are being taken on topwaters during the daytime. But guys, three-weighing bucktails and three-weighing eels in the race are doing the best damage. And, you know, it's not going to surprise no one to hear that uh, the better fish are coming at night. We are hearing about some big fish for the guys that don't mind working for them on the reefs outside the Connecticut River. It's been mostly a boat thing. Um, guys fishing eels at night, just going from reef to rock pile to reef and putting in their time are connecting with some decent fish you know you might find some at black point hatchets uh, heading over to cornfield or out to southwest all those areas are holding some fish and it's the guys that can stick it out that are finding them and then the last place that's had some reliable fish up into the 20 pound class maybe kissing 30 pounds uh deep waters south of milford south in new haven uh, it's been a chunk bite nighttime uh, guys drifting with fresh chunks are getting some decent bass in that area right now, even despite the fact that the surface temps are pretty warm. Uh, for sea bass in Connecticut, it's been, like I would concentrate east of the Connecticut River, but I'm seeing and hearing about plenty of fish on Six Mile Reef and some of their rock piles off of that. Same with Southwest. Um, but the better fish are being caught in deeper water, 80 to 100 feet, pretty much just heading straight out from Niantic, Bloody Grounds and areas like that off of Bartlett Spindle, that deep water south of there, uh, has been some, it's been some solid action in those areas. And then if, as I mentioned in the Rhode Island portion, if you go around behind fishers and get into some of the deeper water out there, you're also gonna run into some nice sea bass in that area. Uh, fluking has been a grind for the most part in the sound. Uh, one place that's been giving up some more reliable catches is 80 to 100 feet south of Black Point, there's been some better fish there. Isabella's been pretty disappointing. Uh, I have heard of some fish in that like six to eight pound range and some smaller ones taken along the north shore of Long Island. And then, um, but of course, you know, if you really want to go and get a big fluke, you're either heading for Montauk or heading for Block Island. That's where most of the guys that are bringing back supposedly, you know, Connecticut big fluke are going and coming back from. So, again, if you've got the time, you've got the fuel, just skip the inshore stuff and head to where the fish are. And the last thing that I've heard about in Connecticut is that there has been a decent tog bite in the Eastern Sound. I haven't really heard of any, I haven't heard much about specifics. I don't know exactly where, I don't know exactly how big, but um, Guys that are putting a day in bottom fishing, they're getting some sea bass, they're getting some fluke, they're wrapping up the day on some of the deeper rock piles, you know, say 20 to 50 foot deep, and they're pulling some nice tog on jigs and crabs. So it's uh, it's one of those fisheries that the summer tog fishery isn't always talked about, isn't always utilized by most fishermen, but this year seems to be a good year in Connecticut and Rhode Island. Now I'm going to throw it over to Max from Fisherman's World. He's going to give us a little rundown of what's going on in the Western Sound. Take it away, Max. The striped bass fishing seems to be well into sunset, nighttime, and the early morning hours. We've heard a lot of nicer striped bass taken around Sheffield Island and Kakini Shoals at sundown. Guys are getting them on topwater spooks and paddle tails. The bigger fish are still coming from middle ground, guys trolling tube and worm, deep divers, and mojos. The bluefish have been the name of the game these past couple weeks. They're virtually everywhere around our islands, and guys are finding the uh, bigger ones, diamond jig in 11B and 28C. Fluke fishing remains slow. Guys are getting some nice fish. We weighed in some fish to eight pounds this week. Here's a couple photos. And then the porgy fishing is really good. Guys are still scoring from the beaches, our deeper water wrecks, our deeper water reefs, and our shallow water reefs. 
the tuna bite's still going strong in the gully. There are definitely some bigger fish now in the mix, so definitely bring some heavier gear. And then guys work in tuna ridge and the horns. Thank you and good luck. Thanks, Max. Great report as always. Always appreciate hearing from you. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the report for Connecticut and really the reports for the entire region this week. I hope you found them helpful. If you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman, head over to the website, thefisherman.com, and check us out. We've got a lot of free content on there. We've got reports from all the way from pretty much Delaware all the way to Maine. Um, we have articles that cover that entire range. It's, it's worth it. And you get access to all three editions, so you're, I mean, you're covered nine ways from Sunday. If you're just going to be a uh, subscriber on YouTube, that's fine. Just make sure you hit like and subscribe and give us a uh, hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification when we post new content. And uh, that's what I got for you guys this week. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next week. Steigercraft boats built by people who fish our waters. Serious anglers choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid Atlantic. Visit steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.